want to say you will be tested. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say you will be tested. Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. Yes, you will be tested. We shall take our proof text from that book of James, chapter 1. I will read from verse 2. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Verse 4 says, let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. In verse 12, it says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God promised to those who love him. Are you listening to that? What a wonderful text. Tell neighbor, say, you will be tested. You will be tested. I can't hear you. That you are a Christian does not mean you will not have problems. Many people are here today because your friend told you share your problem with your friend. And your friend said, let's go to church. When you become a child of God, you don't have problem. That is not entirely true. Because the Bible says here, when trouble comes, considered an opportunity for great joy. God blesses those who endure test and temptation. Meaning that you are a Christian does not mean you will not have problems. Does that not mean problems will not come to your life? Problems will come, but our confession solves the problem. Whatever situation, you find yourself in, whether negative or positive, the whole world is watching to see how you handle it. When God is aware of your trouble, he will not leave you without victory. Tell never say, when God is aware of my trouble, he will not leave me without victory. When God is involved in your matter, it means he is busy planning your future. It means you are not alone. It means the matter is settled. The Bible says, we believers, we live by faith, not by sight. Yes, that is true. When you live a life of faith, you will not consider the size of your problem because you know that no condition is permanent for a child of God. Amen. Tell neighbor, say, you will be tested. Look at in that Acts chapter 16, verse 23. The Bible talks about Paul and Silas that they were arrested. They were chained, legs and feet. I mean, and hands. Their legs and their hands were chained in the inner cell of the prison. The Bible says at midnight, they begin to sing hymns, worship and praise to God. He says, suddenly, while they were worshiping, suddenly, a mighty earthquake began to come and shake the foundation of the prison to a point that even the chains that fastened their hands and feet were loosened. What do we learn from it? A lesson I picked out of it is that if you handle your trouble, your difficulty, with care, 
If you handle them with great care, they will soon turn to good times. Tell them, say, if you handle your your trouble, your challenges with care, they will soon turn to good times. You must go through little discomfort in order to experience a new level in life. You can't just jump from where you are now. You can't just jump to another level without passing through some discomfort, some pain. We must learn that whatever circumstances, whatever situation we are in, we must learn to rejoice. Apostle Paul learned and he told us that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15, he said, I have learned to be content, to be happy, no matter the circumstances in my life. If you are sitting here today as a Christian and you have not learned to rejoice when problem comes overwhelming your life, your family, to rejoice and love, it means you have not arrived. When the heart is rooted, I mean when your heart is rooted in the word and you have studied the word, lift the word and it abides in you, you will know what to do when tests come. You will know what to do when troubles come your way. Tell neighbor, say, when your heart is rooted, when your heart is rooted in, the word, in the word, and you have studied the word, lived the word, and it abides in you, you will know what to do when storms come. Job knew what to do when trouble come. He blessed God. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. That's, imagine you hear that your children just died. Your boys again, they just died suddenly, storm everything. Your workers, your relative coming to tell you. And you say, blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken. Because Job was rooted in the word. He lived the word. The word abided in him. He knew exactly what to do when trouble came. Paul and Silas, after being beaten, arrested and being beaten, beaten, and being imprisoned, they begin to worship and praise God. In their prison condition, David knew what to do when he was facing Goliath, he remembered that many battles have fought in my life. God has been seeing me through. He said, this thing that is facing me, the same God who was fighting for me when I was facing a lion, a bear, the same God will help me to defeat this man. If you are a Christian, you must learn to discuss the process of victory instead of your warfare. You must start discussing Talk about the one who's fighting for you than the one who's fighting you. Tell never say if you are a Christian, you must learn to discuss the process of your victory, not your warfare. You must talk about the one who is fighting for you than the one who's fighting you. As a Christian, you will be tested before victory. Listen to what the Bible says. Consider it joy, an opportunity for great joy when you face trials, difficulty, and temptation. See it as a joy. You call yourself Christian, but you are not living in this word. You are not obeying this word. Each time trouble comes, instead of seeing it as an opportunity for great joy, because God blesses those who endure, test, and temptation. And we give up. 
we cry. As a Christian, you will be tested before victory. Fear of temptation, fear of problems is fear of good. When Jesus was tempted, he did not murmur or rebel. No, Jesus knew the answer in Matthew 4. Don't murmur or mumble in the hive of your adversity. Tell neighbor, say, don't murmur or mumble in the hive of your adversity. Tell neighbor, say, test will come. You will be tested. Yes. We serve a God who never dodges crisis. You are always trying to dodge your, your crisis, but we are saving a God who never dodges crisis. We should see them as an opportunity for our advancement. Tell them, I say, see your, see your troubles, your problems, as opportunity for your advancement. See them. Trials. Difficult times, challenges cannot break the one who relies on God's strength. You must go through little discomfort. Listen to what James says. He says, after you have suffered a little while, you must go through little discomfort in order to experience a new level in life. Let's go to that book of 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter. Tell never say you will be tested. You will be tested. You will be tested. Yes. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. Listen. What a wonderful text. A wonderful text. It says, In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Jesus Christ. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Tell never say you will be tested. What does this mean? This text means we Christian, we are strengthened by challenges. Tell never say we Christians, we are strengthened by challenges. What is your challenge? Ask your neighbor, what is your challenge? Ask your neighbor, what is your challenges? What are your challenges? Yes, your challenges can be poverty. Your challenge can be sickness. Your challenge can be disappointment. Delay in progress. Your challenge can be nightmares. Setback. And the Bible says we are strengthened by challenges. Because the Bible says after you have suffered a little while, it's part of Christianity. Turn about say suffering is part of Christianity. When God is aware of your trouble, he will not leave you without victory. So this means there are people who are suffering and God is not aware. And there are those that are suffering and God is aware. Those are those who honor God, who bless God in their trouble. Many people do not know the scripture. And they have never let the scriptures live in them because they do not know the scriptures. They may have sat under one of the finest preachers or teachers of the word in the country for many years, yet the word has never become part of their lives. Using the word in our daily life, it is the secret of faith. Then the word abides in us and enables Christ to express himself through us. The word of God, it is our contract and our contact with him. Then, and then, 
the word becomes a living reality in our daily life. If this word is our contract, you must abide with the contract. You must follow what the contract says. There is what we call break. You know a break? A stop in every person's life. Some break are supposed to last for six months. Some breaks in our lives are supposed to be for one year. Some are supposed to be for just six years. But you end up having permanent break. Sometimes your break is supposed to be only for one month. Because of your attitude, your behavior towards your test, your trouble, you begin to extend the period of your break. You can't move from level one to level two without a break. Jesus was telling the teachers and the Pharisee, teachers of the law, he said, you people, you are so wise in interpreting the weather, but you can't interpret the sign of the Son of, son of Man. When the wind is coming this side, we say, no, the rain is coming, but this one is passing. It's passing. This is what we know. But when promotion is coming to your life, you don't know. That is why you complain. When good things are coming in your life, you complain because you don't know. You only interpret weather. But when blessing comes your way, you don't even know. You are always complaining. As a Christian, when good is coming your way, foolish things will happen. You might receive a sick letter from your boss that the contract has ended. You say, no, but the contract was three years. This, it's only six months. It's ended. When promotion is come, a marriage that has been doing well, they must start being troubled from nowhere. You say, but we go to church with my husband. My husband doesn't want to go to church anymore. There's trouble, there's fight, there's this. You might even lose your car. They might repossess it. You might lose your house. You are staying in a one-bedroom flat. You might lose it, not knowing that God is busy preparing a four-bedroom. That is why you have to leave this one. Tell them, I say, you will be tested. You will be tested. You need to know and interpret the signs as a Christian. You need to know. When this comes, you know that promotion is about to come. There must always be a break, and that break is not always nice. That stoppage. It's not always nice when it happens. But it's safe to move you. Remember, you can't move from one level, to year one to year two. You must sit for exam before you go to the next level, level two. You have to sit in a classroom and write the exam, the test. When you pass this test, that time of exam is always a tough time because your focus has to be there. You have to study because in your heart you want to pass. You want to move to the next level. You want to move from level one to level two. When you're in level two, you want to move from level two to level three. You should always know that there is a force that is fighting. The force that is responsible for your poverty is fighting with the force that is responsible for your blessing. This force that is responsible for your delay, your setback, they will not just leave you like that. Just like that. And you just, they just let, let go like that and you move. No ways. They will start fighting. And the angels that are fighting for your breakthrough, they need your cooperation. <laughs> imagine, imagine somebody's fighting for you and you're complaining. Ah, ah, and they're fighting for you. They will leave you like that. That is why today we have people that are permanently in poverty. 
permanently sick, permanently disappointed because they can't cooperate with the force that is responsible for their blessing. When the force that is responsible for your blessing is fighting with the force that is responsible for your poverty, the grass will start to suffer. You are the grass. You are the platform. We believe that your faith has been lifted by the clip you have just watched. To witness more of God's power through His servant at the Roadmap Ministry, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and follow us on our Twitter and Instagram pages.